Hi, I'm David and welcome to Leisure Bit. And today we're finishing off the lithium install, um, showing you how I've installed the inverter. So let's take a look at that now. Um, the inverter I chose to install was the Giandel, I think it's pronounced. I'll pop a link in the description below anyway, if you're interested in checking that one out. And thanks to Graham from Wizard in the Wild, because I, I had an old inverter I was going to install, but unfortunately it had conked out. Probably because it had ended up being underwater at uh, some point in time, but that, that's uh, uh, another story for another day. One over a beer, that one, I think. So I ended up needing to purchase a new one. So I was having a look around, and what I didn't want to get was, um, given you're dealing with high current electricity here, I didn't want a kind of half-baked job, for want of a better expression. So I, I had a look and spotted a few of them, just looked on the usual places, Amazon, eBay, Google for them and that sort of thing, just to see what came out recommended. And there was lots of different recommendations. And some of them, I think, um, you've got to be careful when you look at recommendations that it's not the company doing the review to recommend them. But uh, I uh, had a quick chat with um, Graham from Wizard in the Wild because um, I'd spotted he'd used uh, one previously and noticed through his videos that uh, that seems to be working as you'd like it to work, so uh, i.e. safely and working well. So um, Graham gave me the details of the one he got. So I just did a little bit more diligence on it, checked nothing had gone strange uh, with them, the quality dropped off or whatever since uh, he purchased it and ended up buying the uh, same type. Um, for reference on the the cost, um, the current price is £389.96 for that particular one on Amazon, but again if you shop round you might be able to get it a little bit cheaper than that. And it came with the inverter. It also came with um, two negative leads and two positive leads, the remote control, the cable for the remote control and some instructions um, all nicely uh, packaged in the box so it was uh, delivered safely. So I gave it a quick test before bringing it into the uh, van just to make sure everything worked all right and it did. One thing I was really impressed with was when you've got the power switched off via the remote, I was expecting there to be a little residual drain on the battery from that because um, a lot of things, even though they're not switched on, you know, you hear it, uh, everyone says, don't leave your telly on standby because it's using power and, you know, typically it is using some power. Uh, but I couldn't record any kind of draw when it was actually switched off, um, either on the inverter itself with the, the switch on there or via the remote control. I, I was really pleased with that um, because it means it's not using power until you've actually switched it on. I also thought in terms of the setup, there's a few different ways you can do it. And a lot of people put separate inverter plugs in. Uh, but what I wanted to do is to be able to use some of the already installed things in the van, such as the microwave and the hob, um, the electric hob plate, uh, without needing to switch um, plugs over and things like that, and also just use the existing sockets that are in as required. So I had to think about how to do that and decided to fit a relay to actually change over when the inverter's switched on between the mains inlet to feed the sockets and the inverter outlet um, to feed the sockets. So I've connected the relay up um, to that and we'll have a look at that as we go through. Um, I've got the commons connected to the sockets of the relay, the live and the neutral, so I'm using it's a two pole uh, double toggle relay. So I'm using the two um, common connections to connect to the sockets because I either want to switch mains or in the on position, I want to switch it to inverter. And I've also installed feeding from the inverter a residual current device um, to try and prevent, um, whilst it won't stop you getting a little electric shock, it would hopefully stop if you get your fingers uh, on live wires and things, it would hopefully stop that becoming a serious or, or potentially 
um, life-threatening situation because it should just trip the power off there. So I've put a residual current device in line as well for safety there. Um, there's a couple of bits I'm going to improve on uh, what we look at today. On the previous video, um, really appreciate the comments that I got there around um, that the, there weren't much cop because I, I had to replace one of the lower power ones and I did actually have a 250 amp single breaker but uh, I, I gave that one up because I thought there's no way the contacts on that would, would continue to carry 250 amps it, it just didn't look up to the job so what I'm actually going to do there is when, when we take a look at that I'm going to actually replace that and I'll show you that next time as well because I'm just going to put a, a rotary switch on there and um, the typical ones used for battery isolation that allows me to isolate the battery um, and I'm going to put two of them on one to isolate the supply into the uh, van which we looked at last time and that's then connects through what I'm going to put a 50 amp fuse in there and the reason for 50 amp is um, I've potentially got from the charger uh, up to 30 amps or from the B2B up to 25 amps plus up to 15 amps from the solar on the roof that could be coming through so it just gives a little bit of a buffer there I'm going to keep the breakers I've put that actually feed out to the van circuits because firstly they seem to be working okay and with a 50 amp fuse on the main inlet that should prevent any issues in the event of a so short circuit and the breakers not working correctly. The issues with the breakers seem to be they're not always tripping off at the current they, they should be tripping off at um, which is obviously an issue in terms of the design and quality of those so I didn't want to take any chances because it's just not worth it. And just while we're on the subject of safety obviously what we're looking at here now we're dealing with mains electricity and we're dealing with very high current DC electricity and that can cause two things you can end up getting electrocuted which none of us want to do and also um, we've got very high currents there so we need to make sure cabling and things is up to the job um, otherwise it'll get hot and potentially cause a fire so hence the extra diligence to do in terms of making sure everything's connected up safely and is working in a way that we've got multiple points if anything goes wrong in order to prevent for instance a fire or something like that happening so a little bit of work to finish off on that one but I think for the right reasons as well just to make sure it's as safe as it can possibly be let's take a look at how I've installed it and again just a reminder we'll cover off a more detailed kind of technical wiring diagram in the next video and then there's also a final video after that that completes the series which is the so what um, you know we've spent a load of money here putting this in place what does it give me how does it work out in terms of value for money and how long should it last and all of that good stuff so that'll be the final video in the series anyway let's get on and take a look at the setup so here's the inverter fitted on top of the little boxing we made around the battery uh, that you'll have seen from the previous videos and if we take a look along this end we've got the positive uh, which feeds into there and then it comes in through this and this breaker because uh, I used two positive lines off the battery and there's the two coming out and feeding into there. Now worth noting I'm going to actually put an also an inline fuse in both of those as well because uh, sometimes these breakers um, haven't been as reliable as they maybe should have been. Um, not these particular ones, but some some people have purchased and then it just gives that extra bit of protection The inverter itself also has some protection in so it's just kind of Doubly careful just considering the high currents involved So the negative that feeds the inverter comes out of the battery It then feeds through the smart shunt and then it runs back under here to this distribution box and then we've got two wires again just to split the current that runs back and then that feeds up into 
the negative which is just at the at the back of there so there's two wires for the negative and two for the positive and i've put a bit of conduit uh tubing around there just to stop the wires catching and rubbing on anything just to keep them nice and solid and same on this uh, which is nothing to do with the inverter but i'm actually going to put a 50 amp fuse in line with that as well appreciate the feedback on the quality of some of those breakers so fine for switching things off um i'm going to actually put some switches and fuses instead of these breakers so it covers the same thing off but uh, a little bit safer so probably not recommend kind of copying this bit of the setup but i'll update in the next video once we've sorted that bit out so that's how the power gets into the inverter and it just feeds in the back there and this is a 3000 watt 6000 watt surge pure sine wave inf inverter and just a big thanks to graham from wizard in the wild again for his advice on that this was a decent inverter and uh, it seems pretty well made and it's got the relevant uh, kind of CE markings and things on it there. So the output of the inverter, so the power comes out through here and again just put a bit of plastic um, conduit on and then that just runs along the back just stuck again into some conduit down through that piece of conduit there to this little box of tricks here. Now what that is, it's a relay and basically I'm using the relay. Um, it switches, uh, when the inverter's switched on, it switches the sockets uh, in the van, so the existing sockets, over to use the inverter. And when it's switched off, it connects back to the normal main supply. And that's connected up within the uh, breaker box here. And we just have a quick look at the picture there to show how I've done that one. So basically you've got a feed coming out to the sockets, which is connected to the common of the relay, the two commons. It's double pull, double toggle relay. So there's six contacts essentially. And the common live and common uh, neutral connect out to the sockets. The, when the relay is energised, so normally open, um, that's connected to the inverter's power supply and it's also connected to the coil of the relay. It's actually a 230 volt coil on the relay there. And when the inverter's on, it energises the relay, that then switches the power from the inverter to connect to the sockets. When there's no power, going through that relay, it's normally closed, connects then through to the mains. So when the relay is not energized, it's just running normally on mains. Now I've only connected it up to the sockets, which is this end breaker here. So that feed comes out of the top of there to the relay and then comes back in to feed out to the sockets from the common of it. And I've put the remote power switch for the inverter here, so you can turn it on and off. You hear the relay energised there. And I've also put an inverter RCD in line with it. Now, that's just to stop you getting an electric shock if you happen to touch anything. Uh, basically, they work by measuring is the same power going in as is coming back out. So going into the live and coming back out via the neutral. And if there's a difference in that, it'll break the circuit. If we press that, we can just test it there, just to confirm it works. You'll hear the microwave power back up then. So that feeds from the inverter into here, and then that feeds back from there into the relay box. So the inverter connects to that first and then back through that. We'll do a wiring diagram in the next video on bringing it all together just to show how that's all connected up. But hopefully that gives you a bit of a view of how it's connected. You can also use the power button here to switch it off. And the earth is connected back round to the bus bar in the consumer unit 
Um, so that connects across there. You'll have heard the little buzz there, and that's the, actually the relay de-energising. And the reason it makes that noise is the inverter must have very, very big capacitors in that store energy after it's been switched off. Um, so it, it's still kind of running power there for a little while until the relay de-energises. Um, the other thing as well, just to show, is if I knock these two breakers off there, which are the two feeds for the inverter, and then now I turn the inverter on. Even though the power's isolated, you'll see that it's still drawing power out from the capacitors until it's uh, run down there. And worth noting, just be careful with the positive and negative input into the inverter, because unless the capacitor's discharged, if you touch those together, you'll get an... Uh, a, a big crack and a spark off uh, off that so clearly very big capacitors in there and if I turn if I go back along here now and we turn those back on we can return the inverter to normal operation there and there we go you can hear everything powering uh, powering back up and ready for for use so when I want to use the inverter I simply come in here and then just switch it on and then that switches on the inverter and that's now ready for use. Um, so I can use the microwave or I can use the coffee maker or whatever else I want to use that runs on the sockets. Um, I can also use the electric hob as well because that's connected off the um, socket circuit. I'm not connecting anywhere to the heater, the water heater or the charger otherwise because that would just be silly because we'd, we'd essentially be using mains to run the charger to charge the battery that's running the inverter so it's just really inefficient that but uh, it gives you a good view on it and again just a reminder that we've got the RCD there just to protect against uh, electric shock. You can probably see some of the connections in the little box of tricks there we've got the uh, three different cables feeding in the input from the inverter in the um, yellow one and then the limey coloured um, like greeny coloured actually takes the feed from the mains and from the oh sorry to the sockets um to run that so just three wires to run into that so just a reminder to finish things off i'm going to be replacing these with a switch and then just putting some inline fuses rather than using these breakers just it's a bit safer i need to Put some insulation tape or a rubber boot around this just so that nothing touches that that positive there and i also need to run one additional negative connection back to the distribution point here just to again balance the load out just so that if it's running you know a couple of appliances then we don't have to worry about any of the cabling overheating because we are dealing with high currents up to 250 amps here so need you, you know really thick um, cables or, or multiple cables to make sure that works safely without overheating. I'm also going to tidy up this cable I've got running along here to the uh, little remote control box. Um, the inverter also comes with some little um, feet here that you can just screw down that you can see here is pop a screw in uh, obviously if you've done it like that make sure you use short screws so you don't end up screwing into your battery and uh, there's just a quick look at the inverters mounting and there's the socket and there's a spare socket there if I ever want to plug anything else in but worth noting that's not then protected by that RCD device. So that gives you a little bit of insight into how I've connected that up, um, some of the bits and pieces I've used. Again, just a reminder, I'm going to change some of that those safety bits on that, that DC input from the battery just to make it even safer. Um, so it's relatively safe at the moment because it has got double protection, but I just want that extra protection and make sure it's with components you can trust. So really appreciate the feedback you guys give us um, please let me know your thoughts on it because it helps me evolve it and by evolving it and sharing the evolution of it it helps other people get there quicker without making the uh, 
mistakes or, or having to buy extra bits that then you decide you need to change out because they're not up to the job. So that's the uh, inverter setup. And just a reminder again, I can't stress enough, if you are not confident, competent, and to a certain degree, you should probably be qualified to a degree to work on this kind of thing. Um, don't undertake it yourself. Get an auto electrician or an electrician to actually do the work because, again, you're dealing with high current DC. So you need to make sure all the wires are right, connections are right and everything like that because you don't want those things warming up and causing a fire. And secondly, you're dealing with electricity voltages that are lethal um, or potentially lethal so um, just make sure um, it, it needs a lot of care and attention to do this this kind of thing safely and don't forget the age-old rule as well make sure all your wires are tightened up because loose wires cause fires so there we go that's the um, setup hope you found that useful and uh, maybe it inspires you to do something similar with your van. I'd love your feedback. Um, again, the feedback um, to date's been invaluable because it really helps me make sure we get it tweaked so it's both safe, works as efficiently as possible, and actually it's something then you don't need to uh, worry about. Um, so I'm certainly one that if, if there's something not right, I'll worry about it. So it's better just doing the job right, making sure it's safe and good. So that's my setup anyway. Um, and look forward to hearing your comments. And I will catch you on the next one where we bring it all together and we'll bring that wiring diagram in if you want to see how it all connects up with everything else. And also uh, a little bit more detail of how the relay is wired up if you didn't quite follow my explanation on that one. So... Catch you on the next one. You take care. Bye-bye.